Good afternoon and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Kansas City, Missouri for the 29th Annual Wide Open Disc Golf Championships. On behalf of Disc Golf Planet, we thank you for joining us for one of the sport's premier events. I'm Crazy John Brooks, your host for today's broadcast, and I'm joined by my co-host, broadcast analyst, the Disc Golf Guy, Terry Miller. Terry, welcome to the show. Thank you, Crazy. I cannot wait to watch the drama unfold today. So exciting after yesterday's action at Blue Valley, and oh, what a show it was, with, especially with our top men's and women's pros going at it. Today, the weather was a, a early on the case, as we've had some outstanding conditions, true to the Midwest, show up, but uh, all to everyone's surprise and admiration. Uh, all, all during our week here, we've shown you players from all over the country coming to Kansas City, but today it's all about the Swope Gold Course. We're about to catch up with our ladies' professional groups on the course right now. We invite you to stay tuned for our coverage here, brought to you live through the Disc Golf Planet. This is the wide open. You see our approach on number one, a difficult down and uphill through our valleys here. Swope Park developed in the early 80s. Many players returning here through majors. Terry, we've seen many uh, world champions have, uh, have gone on to part of their quest has been reached through the wide open here before. This event is definitely a pinnacle event that players must come to and they must do well. If they do well here, that usually is indicative how they're going to do the rest of the year. As we watch the uh, conditions here improve, much to the players uh, pleasing. Just short, but uh, once again, our uh, groups have begun uh, going off this morning at approximately 10.30. Joining that group, Ken Franks of Kansas City. Yeah, it's a majestic setting here at Swope. Uh, it's been rearranged over the years many times, but nonetheless, we feel we've reached the perfect layout for players. We'll begin by the number one tee up by the pro shop. As we check the action. Man, right in the center. Well done. See Ken Franks sizing up the green and will yield. No, he's going in. And Franks slips it in the low and right. It's a little bit tough playing at home, but uh, I'll tell you, with all the activity, Terry, we've got a little bit of a show uh, taking place after the golf is over as well. It's a great atmosphere set up so far. What has really been phenomenal is how the PDGA has stepped up this year. They've even brought us this beautiful tent that you're seeing right now to really bring that festival-like atmosphere. Players, spectators, people can go in there, check out what the PDGA has to offer, and talk all about other disc, of, disc golf events going on. And it also helps set the stage for other things going on. What's going on right after the uh, action concludes today here, Crazy? Well, as we take a nice glance here, the the, the at the uh, tent, you know, of course, that's got a huge flat screen in it. They'll be broadcasting the Disc Golf Planet broadcast uh, there in the tent. And um, as the afternoon progresses, we'll have our championship putt uh, at the end of 18. Uh, our open groups and all of our professional groups will gather in front of the Parks and Recreation stage here. Casey Mo has provided us with a big shelter stage. We've got Alexander the Great playing later, directly after the awards. Uh, just a great environment, a bit of a festival atmosphere for everyone to enjoy. It's not always all about the Frisbee golf. There's Matt Oram prepared to tee. We're uh, sending our foursomes off as a tee time starts. So uh, every eight minutes we'll have a different group. And um, that is the style rather than the shotgun start where, where all players would travel as foursomes to their tee and then with the horn that we all know that's uh, pleasing to some ears and annoying to others. But uh, take a glance here at number one, Terry. Hey, crazy. What we have here on hole one is Joe Revere, Bradley Williams, Matty Oram, and Philo Brathwaite all just waiting to tee off. As I said, it looks like Joe has the tee first. Joe is uh, currently sitting at nine under par. And, uh, Number one sits atop the t the uh, box here, the very the most commanding hill here at Swope Park, 390 feet between the tee and pin. 
discs will have to stay low as this uh, center ceiling is rather low to make it all the way up on the uh, Greenside Hill. We've got our wildlife areas down in the middle there. Those, of course, are out of bounds. You see to the right and the center player's front and to the left. Those are all out of bounds areas. It's got to turn and that uh, hit one of the more frequented trees out here. That's a very difficult approach shot awaiting. Next to T, we have Maddie Orham out of Mobile, Alabama. That, uh, that roll tide uh, vibe going out to all the Tuscaloosa folks. We hope their recovery is swift. And right down the center for Aaron Orham. And that'll leave that classic 75 footer uphill for Birdie. Just glance at Jack Lowe, tournament director. Next up, Philo Brathwaite, also sitting at eight under, tied with Matty O. Philo shooting a 62 yesterday as he's approaching the T on hole one. Crazy, there's also two Mandos on this hole that they have to go right down the center of. Uh, much lower than desired, obviously. Yeah, we are. Uh... Not sure if that cleared the uh, the collection area, but Philo's got a big round ahead of him. This is a great foursome. You know, it's uh, once again we're mentioning uh, players are sent off the tee off number one in foursomes, and they'll go throughout the afternoon. Our top uh, groups in the men's open division will tee off uh, approximately 12:30 to 1 o'clock, and we'll be covering all of this action live here through the Disc Golf Planet. Those of you that have logged on so far realize we've made some changes to the website. Appreciate your suggestions and the modifications, all based on input. So thank you for sharing your your uh, suggestions, and uh, it's just as easy as that Terry there's a there's a new twist to uh, becoming part of the disc golf planet family what you tell our audience about. well what we've done is we've made it easier for you to win stuff and I don't know anyone we haven't received any complaints about Great. that all you have to do is go out there log in become a one-time member which makes you eligible for all of the prizes lifetime lifetime member makes you eligible for all of the prizes at all of our giveaways yesterday giving away disc golf center certificates keen shoes it was just a plethora of stuff and today we'll be doing the same so make sure Sure you go out become a member as we watch Bradley Williams approach on hole one right through that tight gap gotta be happy with that you'll see a lot of these very tight uh, corridors to have to navigate here at Swope Park developed in 1982 by Tom Ingle of course uh, my first start uh, in the game Terry was as the course pro here in 1982 uh, with a Big uh, Coleman cooler full of chips, pop, and candy bars, and taking greens fees. But uh, I think we'll have to agree this was one of the most one of the most accommodating disc golf complexes we'll find because of the rich uh, relationship between Dan Cashin, who's the Swope Park operations manager here for disc golf, and the Kansas City Mo Parks and Rec Department. An incredible relationship has developed over the dedication and the years. And uh, Dan Cashin is to be commended. I'm sure he's happy watching all the action here. Crazy, if I wasn't four years old when this course started, I swear I would have been here already. Oh, that made my <laughs> back hurt. Taking a glance up the number one fairway, Orem seems to have cleared the collection area. As Orem steps up to his shot, I'd just like to quickly point out, next up will be the women's lead card. I really like what they've done here at the KC Wide Open. They've taken the women's top card and integrated it just a few groups short of the men's top card. That's so that the gallery is going to get a little bit of the action of both the men and the women's top finishers. And of course, our top ladies now crushing a huge part of the men's field. Here's Brathwaite for birdie. Bit of a precarious spot for number one. You see the other pins located uh, midway up the fairway to the left, the blue pin. That's our medium range. That's 310 feet. Orem. And close to the necessary distance. Uh, speaking of Matt's, uh, you know, it paid attention to his home folks, you know, Tuscaloosa. We want to reach out to, to our Alabama listeners and other folks, uh, our viewers out of the southeast. We want to wish you a very swift and quality recovery from the sequence of events recently. Joe Revere to putt.
It's got the height. Oh, close. That's another example of these darts that'll be thrown at slope. With the, with the slope and almost a constant uh, steering uh, to the fairways here, it's got some kind of angle on al almost every instance, Terry. Well, as Joe starts off, we were just looking at his stats. He's been improving by roughly 20 points per round. So if he holds steady to that, he's looking for a 10.58 rated round today. Unfortunately, his first putt doesn't go in. We'll see what he can do the rest of the day. Here's Bradley Williams. A smooth release for par. Bradley is one of the smoothest putters out there. As you saw his drive and his approach, just completely effortless when he releases a disc as we watch the women's lead card come up on hole one. Everybody dressed into the nines today. It's such a great, uh, and it's an event itself, the wide open, as we mentioned. It's not just about the disc golf. We'd also have some, we got a great uh, exhibit by the PDGA. We got some live entertainment uh, later this afternoon. Of course, we've had members of the media stop through. We welcome them as well. Players from all over the United States here to vie for that 29th annual wide open title. We watch the Orem Brathwaite foursome clear on number one. As we mentioned before, coming up in just a moment, our top women's cards will be teeing off. Uh, we want to welcome you back live to Swope Park. This is in the heart of Kansas City, Missouri, uh, established in 1982. You're joined by Terry Miller, co-host. I'm Crazy John Brooks, and proud to join you live through the miracles of the interweb. You're watching Disc Golf Planet. This is the 29th wide open. Coming up shortly, our coverage of the women's groups at a deep field. Yesterday, we saw Paige Pierce just stay on Get ready to tee off. Thank you very much, ladies, for coming to Kansas City. Best of luck. Thank you. Crazy first up to tee. We are going to have our leader, Paige Pierce, who shot a 70 yesterday out at the Blue Valley course. Tournament director Jack Lowe giving a few last minute uh, double checks with rules. And out of bounds. Chris Temko, our course tournament designer, uh, in charge of layouts here at all of our larger events, has done a great job to design the out, beat, oh, out of bounds areas as well as incorporate some, some free space for our spectators. Up first will be Paige Pierce. Terry, what a great show yesterday at the Blue Monster. She definitely brought her A game, shooting a 972 rated 70 at Blue Valley, which was the hottest score amongst all the women competitors. Let's see what she does on hole one. Just a great asset for the game. Started right. And looks to have cleared that collection. Great way to start. You'll find yourself in deep trouble here if you veer off the fairway, especially in this our middle of the turn, 10, 11, 12. Just three strokes behind Paige Pierce is Liz Lopez. A little bit of some early cabbage and folding back into the center. Great shot. She'll be putting uphill for birdie. Of course, the 2008 doubles mixed pairs uh the uh excuse me i believe crazy she was the 2009 doubles world champion here played at swill park as well next up sarah hokum sitting at 12 over par just two strokes behind liz lopez Sarah has clipped some of the trees with that forehand. She's going to have a difficult up and down. But uh, just a couple of meters away from out of bounds, yet safe. Des Redding, well versed here in Kansas City. Got a great game for Swope. It's straight, in or under. That's got some wind. And that's, that looks OB, Terry. 
Looks to be inside that right collection area, but we'll check. Just a moment. Hoka making her way right as soon as she can get down there and find out what kind of trouble she's got herself in. Paige seems to have a, uh, a little bit of a smooth start right down the middle. Liz Lopez also ready for some game. So pleasant conditions here now. We're hovering in the lower 70s. Quite a, quite a contrast <laughs> earlier in the week where we had heat indices above 100 degrees, thunder showers, and actually today they're, they are uh, calling for some other conditions other than what we have now, but we'll just keep you posted and not jinx anything. You want to slip on a banana peel on your way to the award ceremony. Uh, joined by Terry Miller. Folks, you're you're here live at Swope Park. This is the Swope Gold Course players will be traversing today. It's an added 1,400 feet to the normal layout, and uh, it's quite an exciting ceremony so, to follow our golf. We've got a number of top pros, including current and uh, former world championships, all gathered here in Kansas City with our, with our top women's cards having just teed off here. You're looking at Sarah Hokum on number one. Crazy, this leader card looks like there's a little separation amongst the players. As I said, Paige Pierce at seven over par, Liz at 10 over par, and Sarah at 12, and Dez on the end of the box at 15 over par. And here is Sarah's forehand, which you'll see most commonly out of Sarah, a little bit deep, and it looks like she is on the out of bounds line. And <laughs> wow, I think she's gonna be pleasantly surprised. Although she didn't wanna go that deep, she was laying on the out of bounds lines from what we could tell. Now here's Des checking out her point of entry. This collection area you see behind her, this is out of bounds. And uh, all players will take a one to two meter relief. Looks like she's gonna be able to There's take in. There's a hazardous with the rocks, I think. I guess since the string is in there, this, this is, you, you're, you're correcting me at the right time, Terry. Since the string was been installed, it goes back to the one meter. We originally had rocks here. There was some unplayable forgiving there. I. Uh, I'm glad I stand to be corrected. And Redding, obviously more most more qualified than most to run the Edge program, puts it right underneath. Redding was on the lead card here today because she was actually tied with Valerie Jenkins, but she had the second hottest round at the Blue Valley course, shooting a 71, which is why she moved on to the leader card, and Val had dropped back to the second card even though they were tied. Again, all tiebreakers go to the previous round, and that is exactly why we see Des on the leader card today. Paige taking the no-doubt layup. Very wise on final day play, ladies and gentlemen. Now you know that Liz's heart's beating a little bit there. Definitely within her grasp. That's great to see Paige developing a strategy on the first hole and sticking to it. This could be a sign of these future minds that we've got on the course these days. Liz Lopez staring down this. It's to be 38 feet. It's uphill. And didn't really have a chance. It's going to be interesting to see the battles play out today on both of the leader cards in both men's and women's with Paige Pierce and Liz Lopez being very good friends, battling it out for the title. And on the men's side, we have Avery Jenkins and Nate Doss, also very good friends and travel companions. So we'll see how the uh, alliances and battles continue to unfold throughout Sometimes the day. That can really play as a, as a, as a, uh, you know, a positive effect for some. And for those at home watching, what they're doing is determining exactly if she is inbounds or out of bounds. If any part of your disc is touching inbounds, you are still considered inbounds. And as Des did, you can take up to one meter in from that spot, which is exactly what they're doing right now, roughly three feet. The line that's directly behind Liz Lopez's foot is the out of bounds line for the green on number 17. Dez's foot is inside the fairway of number one. As I mentioned before, very clearly, the string on the left of the Frisbee, that is Sarah Hokum's line, is the string of 17. Now, folks, we've got, and the viewers will know this shortly, 
17 green is right behind her, so we've got to watch that back foot being on the out of bounds line. Very risky. Mm, my heart break. Not exactly the way you'd like to start a round today. She got a good break with being in bounds there, but unfortunately could not capitalize. Des Redding, who went out of bounds on her first shot, is looking to get a bogey four here with this putt. And uh, looked like that almost flipped out on the right side. She was a little wide right on that. The chains caught it and brought it back in. And Paige is going to continue with her three stroke lead by taking an easy par here. And Liz, as we said, just three strokes behind with a par as well. I wonder if Hokum would have taken the full, if Hokum would have taken the full meter of relief <laughs> from the 17 out of bounds line, if that wouldn't have been enough to get it over the rim. But uh, nonetheless, a lot of great lawn darts being thrown out here. Swope Park, you know, it has a history of heartbreak as well. We've had some champions lose the last moment. Uh, we're going to have a chance to meet potentially our inaugural champion, Bob Field, later in the broadcast, dating back to 1983. Uh, the tournament was played at Shawnee Mission Park in Shawnee Mission, Kansas, to the west, about 25 miles. But uh, and nonetheless, the, out of the, all the different courses that have developed in Kansas City, we've come up to have a four-course rotation, which really makes for a big week can of disc golf. It has, but my real question is, how many disc golf titles have you won here at Swope Park, Crazy? Uh, well, Too many to count? Can we count league? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see, uh, yeah, I can go back to a, uh, I can go back to a golf title in 85 and I never was able to win a wide open. I've okay. got a few seconds but uh, that was all about just making the finals and playing in front of the home crowd. But uh, having uh, seen Natron Doss win his very first world title as a junior by 25 strokes and uh, at the age of 15 and then uh, uh, just uh, things like that really make the, the uh, city even more important to me. I, I love that people have uh, historic moments here. We're looking at the tee on number two. Uh, very difficult placement. This is our championship at 389, the basket located up just in front of the clubhouse, as you see the top of your screen. There is an OB line left all the way. And right down the middle. Liz Lopez. And a beautiful turned over and laid out. Number one, number two, excuse me, here sponsored by Beckett Carduff and Eagle Products, owned by Duffy Carduff and the Carduff family. Tavish, Chauncey, Beckett. Hi out to Chris Ann, Maria, Sarah Holcomb. Great control on that side. Well, crazy, not only is there OB, as you mentioned, on the left side of the fairway where a right handed hyzer could fall out, but a right handed forehand could also go OB to the right side of the fairway as we watch Dez go with the backhand approach. And all four of our ladies making the fairway in the short grass. Uh, look up the basket on number two, originally number 11 on the original Swope Park layout. What seems so great about this layout, Crazy, is that everyone that is here at the park has an opportunity to spectate a variety of holes from very, from on top, of, perched on top of that hillside, just like it is behind hole two. And Casey Mo Parks and Rec have got us a picnic bench. So just a great arena, as uh, Terry's mentioning. Those of you watching can come out and check out more of the broadcast, even live here in the PDGA tent. We'll show the broadcast live there in the tent in the background, watching our ladies walk up fairway two. A lot of folks to thank Terry. Our broadcast being brought to you by the PDGA of Appling, Georgia, featuring the International Disc Golf Center, a great vacation destination too, featuring the Steady Ed Museum. 
Paige Pierce taking a look at her second shot. It appears that Redding will be first. Textbook approach. Those of you that haven't become a member yet of the PDGA, you can log on. You can join through Disc Golf Planet as well. You log on to our .tv site, join up, get your number. We're, Terry Miller mentioned we're approaching the 50,000 number mark. With a backhand approach, Sarah Hookham. Also our support, very key through Innova Champion Discs. Very popular name in the game, if not the number one for those of you that enjoy The Rock, The AVR, a number of famous names coming out of there, building champions for decades. And finally, the Philadelphia Insurance Companies. Take a look at Liz Lopez sizing that up. Here's to be at the 50-foot mark. Not quite got her sights, maybe, tuned in, but had enough height. <laughs> and uh, continuing exactly as she did on hole one, Paige Pierce is going to play very conservative at this point. And she is nursing a three-stroke lead, so I see nothing wrong with that. With these uh, beautiful sloping fairways and, and hillsides, uh, he, she wants absolutely no chance at it, the disc to hit the basket and roll away. So we watch Des Redding go for her par three. You know, this could develop a little bit of a <laughs> provocation even within the foursome. That's toying. It's almost challenging one of the other ladies to go for it in a case. Like Liz had the chance to make it. You watch Holcomb after a great sidearm and a tap in par. But uh, it's, it's like, come on. Yeah, I'm, you want it? Come and get it. <laughs> She's going to make somebody earn it if they're going to take away that title from her. Here's our approach on number one. Obviously, uh, directly between the two nature collection areas. Dutch as we, Napier. As we catch up on hole number one, we're gonna have Dutch Napier, Ricky Wasaki, Brian Schweberger, and Paul Dorries. As I mentioned yesterday, Paul was questionable about coming back out to the Blue Valley course after sustaining a little bit of an injury during Friday's play, where he was almost mowed down by a, uh, a golf cart of sorts. Unfortunately, there was a mix-up in communication, and Paul uh, almost got run over by a golf cart, to, to okay. put it bluntly. So, uh, like the word almost. <laughs> to, to see that he's out here playing, it uh, seems as if his hand and wrist are doing just fine. It still may be hindering him. We'll see his approach on hole one. Somehow being bumped by a golf cart and making it back inside the hotel room window from walking on the 30th story balcony on the outside of a hotel in Canton, China. I'm not feeling so bad for, for, uh, for Dutch. Here's Paige looking at the downhill number three. It's a challenge to keep the disc low enough to make it under the ceiling yet end up flexing out at the bottom of this beautiful valley. And there's a gap. That's it's done perfectly, Terry. Hole three playing downhill, coming in at 378 feet. As you said, it's all about keeping the disc low enough to penetrate through that window below the tree line. That's the preferred route to the right side of that oak tree. And finishing left. And that's even closer for that birdie attempt. Sarah Holcomb is going to have quite a handful with the sidearm delivery. Unless it's going to roll, she's going to have to take a little extra distance left. Very difficult uh, design here in the Tom Engel course at Swope. Look at that, Terry, a crush. Sarah has no problems with power. She generates it beautifully throwing that forehand shot as her primary choice as we watch Des Redding, who also has no problem throwing big powerful shots. That 
That can flex, and yeah, it's gonna turn over a little early, but nonetheless, all making it through the more difficult early half of the fairway. We've got shooters on the right here, coming up on basket seven. And you're seeing the uh, course here as we have it. Uh, it's been specially designed to accommodate a larger, more skilled field here at the wide open. Our tournament director, Jack Lowe, has done an outstanding job at assembling the Kansas City Flying Disc Club and utilizing all of its skills. Our art director, Dick Parker, providing many uh, different uh, views through the Kansas City uh, KCFDC.org website. Those of you at home have not come to Kansas City, we invite you to put it on your list for disc golf or for otherwise, the home of jazz and uh, some of the greatest barbecue we had uh, earlier today from the crew, thanks to Dan Cashin. But, uh, it's a great place to be, and as we said, a lot more than disc golf going on here. I'm joined by Terry Miller, my co-host. I'm Crazy John Brooks, and we're joining you live through the miracles of the interweb. This is the 29th annual Wide Open Disc Golf Championships. We're in the middle of our second round of play, and, uh, excuse me, we're in of our third and final day of play, and coming up shortly, our, our champions will be crowned in a very exciting ceremony. Wonderful vistas here at Swope as we glance up to the number one tee with Paul Ulibari, set to begin his quest. That is definitely... <sighs> That is definitely uh, an example of how the sidearm can give you bonuses. We've got the right to left breeze, as our viewers will notice, it right to left, it's left to right for players. Sidearm takes all that out of play. Oh my gosh, crazy. I do not believe what we just saw. Garrett Gerthy right off the tee. I, I'm not sure if it was a lapse in concentration or if it was a uh, just an early release or what it might have been, but he absolutely drilled the tree directly off of the tee. It carried over two or three fairways away, which is going to definitely be out of bounds. It's over an 18. That is not the way that Garrett wanted to start the round. That's Garrett uh, in the red shirt coming down the hill in front. Ken Climo, Ulubari, also joining. Eric McCabe, our 2010 world champion. And uh, Garrett will step to where he was last in bounds. In bounds and out of bounds are denoted by the flags here throughout this uh, championship gold, uh, Swope Gold course, as he's gonna confirm with his group exactly where he was when he went out of bounds. Uh, we've talked a lot about players traveling, traveling together and battling it out. Uh, Paul and Garrett have traveled quite extensively together this year, and here they are battling it out on this card. This is real similar to the Napier approach we saw. Hopefully Garrett can shake this off. It's low and left. That's not what he's after. And he's got that left for a four, Terry. That's not looking so good. Garrett, of course, recently uh, achieving the uh, half of the, the uh, ownership of a world record set with uh, he and Dave Nesbitt at the International Disc Golf Center achieved, uh, they actually broke Tim Selinski's guts catch record, uh, double G throwing at 74 mi uh, miles per hour. Catching Dave Nesbitt. And you could hear that disc hit his hand from a mile away, I'm sure. <laughs> it is probably still stinging at the moment, actually, as Ken we watch Climo. Ken Climo. He's getting a read on where his intersection into the uh, nature collection area. And there's a real quick poke at an in or under up shot. Ken has a lot of history here. We shared uh, some time and a couple wide open finals together. It's always great playing next to the champ. You've got to wonder, have we seen uh, a mistake by Garrett? Looks like a mistake by Ken Climo right here on one. Maybe fatigue has set in now that we're in our third day of competition. These guys are on the fourth course that they've played. They've been here through a long, hot week of practice and tens of thousands of feet of competition. You've got to wonder if, uh, if these guys are amped up. They're not really in the hunt for the win right now. Maybe they're not quite on top of their game. We're going to see how this plays out through the rest of the round. Now, personally, I think it's just a tough, tight course, the way Tom Engel designed it. Even though these fairways that you see appear to have had trees planted to create a fairway, that is not the case. It was designed with the utmost of concern for preserving all of the nature, nature's landscape that we have and uh, the dramatic topography that has become famous to disc golf here. Taking a glance at T2. 
Well, that's just a nice way to put it. You're, I was trying to give them excuses. You're crazy, but if you want to... I if was you so wanna... <laughs> ready to come back on you with that. Oh, boy. Hey, uh, ladies and gentlemen, those of you at home, uh, we want to encourage you to become a lifetime member of the Disc Golf Planet TV family. Don't forget, lifetime membership, just $25. We take a glance at Double G for his fourth shot. Just low, makeable, though. That would have been a great save. And McCabe stepping in. We believe this to be McCabe's drive as uh, we got to the tee just a bit late, but we believe this to be McCabe's drive. And many people will say if McCabe's within 40 or 50 feet, you can count it. Well, right here on hole one, we're gonna test that theory. Just a tad high for the current world champion. Hailing out of Emporia, Kansas. Got a big following here at Kansas City. We're very proud to see that win happen last year. Paul Ulibarri. Paul will have an opportunity to take a circle three, as we call it, meaning he has gone out of bounds, but can still capitalize if he makes this putt by putting this in. And no worries for that save. It may have been Paul's strategy, knowing that his forehand uh, had the chance to go out of bounds, but at least he would be pin high if so, and not Climb too much harm. Bogey. And a rare sight for the champ, adding any kind of a score with a 90 degree angle in it. Eric McCabe, as we mentioned, our current PDGA World Champion in the Men's Open Division. And we got another assembly here, Greg Barsby, Terry. Introduce our group here. Well, as you see them shaking hands and uh, wishing each other luck, we'll have Will Schusterick, Greg Barsby, Paul McBeth, and Steve Brinster. These four Got competitors Schusters all within three arm. strokes. I'm sorry, I just want to give a little shirt color for those folks that might not be familiar with the names, but the appearances. Here, Jack Lowe, TD. Stepping up to the tee, our 2010 United States Disc Golf Champion, Will Schusterick. What a story this kid's got, got cooking for himself. Very aware, very alert. A lot of our young players are gonna use the Schusterick model. 390 feet, number one. And he chose the highest part of the ceiling. <laughs> Textbook. That was an unbelievable shot, as you saw, just going underneath the limbs. And it uh, looks like he came within 15 feet of the basket here on hole one. That's a perfect start. And uh, well, like Matty O, his good buddy, Greg Barsby, always likes to be colorful and wear a, a crazy hat or two. And uh, here we have Greg Barsby, who's going to be stepping up, throwing a forehand. Unfortunately, Greg has released it just a bit high, thrown it into the tree branches. Next on the tee is Paul McBeth. Now the distance throwers are just going to have to choke things down a little bit, as I mentioned. That, that ceiling, as far as Schuster is going, that's, as, that's all you've got. Paul McBeth has got to keep this low with his power. Maybe a bit over adjusted, but nonetheless, that's a, that's a factor because anything you hit in the top ceiling here, Terry, in the center of the fairway, that's going to most likely end you, uh, you'll end up in that natural collection area. Steve Brinster has played many around here. Using all of that gap down the middle, he ends up safe. 
He is. And uh, speaking about harnessing that power or, or clubbing down, so to speak, mm -hmm. I noticed as Paul McBeth was throwing this 390 foot hole that he simply had a mid range. So that tells some of our viewers at home that uh, these players with so much power, when they want control, they may be clubbing down. Now, it's not too often that uh, you can club down to a rock or some kind of a mid-range on a 390-foot hole, but when you're Paul McBath, you have that luxury. So we'll yeah. see how that plays out throughout the rest of the day. It's a great point, Terry, because uh, you know, some players, I feel, and I, and I do honestly, I see, I see them reaching for the thing that will go the farthest, the fastest. And that is another way to control your distance and to, well, to better design your landing area. Uh, for everyone out there that is experiencing any te technical difficulties, we want to apologize. Uh, our, our feed, everything looks good on our end. We're doing everything we can. Simply do some refreshing if you need to. Maybe close and open your browser and uh, uh, log back in. We may end up resetting the satellite dish because of our feed. Uh, we want to bring you the best, most clear signal throughout the day as we may be watching our leader card here. Uh, got Nathan Doss out of Santa Cruz. Also uh, tied with him, as I said, his very good friend, Avery Jenkins. Three strokes behind, Nico LaCastro. St. Louis, Missouri. And uh, David Felberg, who has fallen off the pace a little bit, five strokes behind. We've seen Dave make up that kind of margin before, but- In two uh, holes. It's, it's gonna be a challenge today out on this course. <laughs> watching the group of uh, Macbeth will obviously shoot first with that mid-range. Uh, that was a distance control move. I honestly don't think it was an errant shot. It's very early for him to be taking risks such as this. When you've got a low ceiling and an out of bounds, I guarantee you Paul's got that data coming through his head right now. Macbeth on the uphill second shot on one. All right, I'll consider that uh, safe. One thing that I'd like to mention here, and uh, we'll probably talk about it a handful of times throughout the broadcast, there were only eight players that shot in the 50s at Blue Valley yesterday, and uh, we are about to see seven of those eight players on the top two cards. So wow. when you say the cream rises to the top, that is definitely the case here. Steve Brinster uh, being one of these players that shot in the 50s, shooting a 58 yesterday as he goes for a straddle putt. And just a bit short and left. And with his forehand drive, Greg Barsby will be up next. All these players need to get a good start on one, two, and three, because number four, the par five, is awaiting them. Barsby. Just a bit left on that uh, putt from Greg Barsby, who's been having a great week and, as we said yesterday, really been enjoying his time out here. Shooting a 61 yesterday. The Blue Valley par 64, for those of you at home who have not played the course, uh, this of course in reflection of Avery Jenkins' course record, which is still standing, Blue Valley at 53. We look at our top group leaderboard about to tee off, Jenkins and Doss tied, and immediately following is LeCastro and Feldberg. We'll have them teeing off in just a moment. This is live coverage of the Kansas City Wide Open, the 29th year of this epic event here in the heart of America. I'm Crazy John Brooks, your host for this Disc Golf Planet T live broadcast, and it's a pleasure to have with me co-host Terry Miller, the Disc Golf Guy. Many of you have known through blogging fame as Jack Lowe, tournament director, about to introduce our top men's group. And followed up with Nico LaCastro at a negative 26 and Dave Felberg at a minus 24 to par. Right. Gentlemen, best of luck. Thank you, Doc. What a story. Be the one calling him Don't in. forget, winning his and junior's the, uh, world title here in 1999. Best of luck. Placing now. <laughs> I'll let them finish Funny up. going through Avery's mind, really d developing the inner athlete in the last couple of years. It's quite a story. Mother and father here. Wouldn't miss it. As Terry mentioned, the camaraderie between these four players is immense, yet making for even a more competitive environment 
Le Castro just ready, ready for breakthrough at any moment. Ended up in a bit of a frustrated closing to his yesterday's round after the Miss Birdie uphill on 16. Avery Jenkins once again enjoying his return to Kansas City, somewhat of a Valhalla. Number one measures 390 feet from tee to pin. The valley in the middle at a low point separating player from hole. Our broadcast being brought to you by Dynamic Discs, Disc Golf Center Studios, WorldSports.com, Disc Nation, One Nation Under Bar, and Keen Footwear. And Fade Gear, we appreciate them joining the family of supporting sponsors. Gentlemen on one watching number two tee off they're going to wait for the number two group to clear that's certainly uh, up to the players if they feel any type of distraction or uh, i'm sure this will help the gallery as well looking forward to having uh, so many folks follow the players terry it's a blast putting under pressure having the pretty girls in the audience i'm sure avery's got plenty to keep himself under control with leah better tighten that leash Terry Roddy, of course, our field operations director on camera one, doing a great job as always, an amazing asset to bringing you the best in disc golf, ladies and gentlemen. So the long moments of contemplation before you again, there is no turning back once you tee off. This is Championship Sunday, and you're watching it live on the Disc Golf Planet. Crazy, what do you suppose is going through Avery Jenkins' mind as he's about to embark on this final round tied with his best friend here at the KC Wide Open? What what kind of thoughts? Is he calm? Is he cool? Is he collected? Or is uh, does he still have the jitters? Well, once again, we have to mention that Doss has secured a world title, and that is endless and perpetual confidence on any course for any player. Jenkins, I'm sure, is going to eliminate mistakes. He knows that he does not need distance to to command control of swope. You need accuracy. And Ed is flirting with the line. Avery, as you saw, put out his left hand asking as if that was out of bounds or not. It appears uh, to be safe. He is going to be close, that's for sure, as uh, we watch Nate Doss. This has got to temper his decision a little bit. That's not going to interfere with his strategy, but I know that Natron knows how to move the dial one click either way. That's an early buzz turn, but safe. Close to it anyway. This is another element here, folks. You, those of you at home are watching these out of bounds lines. We also cannot exactly see right up on them, but it is close. It makes for even more drama as you just never know where you're ending up. It's a new element added by Chris Temko. Here's Nico Le Castro. Doors wide open, Terry. It is, and if uh, any of these competitors are going to come up and challenge Nate or Avery, they're going to need to really step up their game as their Nico is three strokes behind currently, and Felberg is five strokes behind going into today's round. Got a turn. Oh, and Nico has thrown it straight into a tree. It looks as if he got a very favorable kick off a very bad throw. That's a one out of a hundred kick right there. Felberg now realizing that the animals are escaping out of the barn, and he's got a chance to literally walk on to a one to two stroke recovery. He's gonna wait for a little hammer banging to stop. Anything, any kind of distraction can play into people's heads. Dave Felberg, your current Mixed Pairs World Champ. And surprisingly low release. Yeah, I, I think he saw a few of the previous competitors throw a little bit high, clip the trees, including Nico, who threw it straight into the tree. So 
could be that uh, he just threw it a little low, or it could be that his nerves are there. He is not quite on top of his game this week. As we said, he's actually five strokes back. Uh, we watch this beautiful gallery following this leader card. As you've said, the vantage points here at Swope are amazing everywhere you go. So these, this gallery will be in for a real treat. And we've got to thank our gallery at home watching us all on discgolfplanet.tv. It's the next best thing to being here. Wouldn't you say crazy? It absolutely is. It's just true sign of success and passion here in Kansas City. The Castro, as Terry said, taking a lucky kick and has been left right in the center of the fairway. Nico throwing his putter to within 18 feet. At this point, he's got to be happy with just taking a three and somewhat relieved that uh, he didn't go out of bounds on that tee shot. I think it's nerves. I honestly do. Big gallery, beautiful course, weather looming, cameras, live broadcast. It's all part of growing your inner athlete and answering the call to duty. That's what discgolfplanet.tv does, folks. It broadcasts the best in disc golf. I want to thank you again for logging on. We joined Dave Felberg on his second shot. Oh, and Dave coming up just a foot short of putting that in. Uh, that would have been a, uh, a big bang to start off this round. He's going to have to settle for par, not making any moves here. That's a great sign, too. If he's ready to gun on one, then I'm, I, I think we're in for a show, folks. Jenkins take it along, smooth, steady walk up. Leah Taylor on the bag. And I'm sure that has its own comfort factor. The Castro uh, taking a glance. Obviously not happy with that approach, either. That's far from where he could put it. Avery uh, obviously taking relief, but we don't know if he's out of bounds, Terry. Well, by the look that Nico had, just by his uh, body English and, and whatnot, when he went over to look at Avery's lie, it was unclear as to if maybe Avery was just very close to the line. In the magnifying glass. <laughs> yeah, they definitely were inspecting it to be sure of it. Uh, we'll find out shortly if Avery, ca Avery caught a break on that. Either way, he's looking to put this putt in as he's about pin high. He's a good 70 out. Just and underneath and safe. Seems as if all of our competitors that are throwing putts up today have just come up barely short. Yeah, he's not looking like he birdied. He's not looking like he parred. I mean, Terry, excuse me. Nathan Doss. see this uh, very temperamental wind we have here in the hills of Swope Park. This is the Swope Gold Course, measuring some 1,600 feet longer than the normal Swope layout. Watching our top men's group here, Nicola Castro, after his second approach shot, he'll have this roughly 18-footer for par. And a no-brainer for Le Castro, coming out of St. Louis, Missouri, somewhat close to here, just a mere four hours away, due east from Kansas City. They're watching third-day coverage of the wide open. Nathan Doss for the tap-in. Sponsored by Discraft, Doss once again taking his first world title away from here in Kansas City, 1999. I think you may have confused some people watching our broadcast yesterday when you kept speaking of Doss's three world titles. Yeah. I knew exactly what you were talking about, but certainly referencing, as you said, his junior world title right here in 1999. Came here at 15 years old, had players uh, you know, uh, up to 17 years old in the tournament, won by 25 strokes. Well, 
My closest shot at a world title was actually against Nate Doss. And that was just the year prior, 1998. Really? Unfortunately, it was for the mini championships at the oh. Amateur World Championships held in Appleton, Wisconsin. Nate Doss and I, uh, as you said, at the age of 14, we were tossing minis around in the hotel room with Steady Ed watching above. So it was uh, an amazing experience to know all these years later, Nate Doss and I battled out on the mini disc golf course. Missed it by that much. Uh, Mike Penny, scorekeeper, uh, taking charge here as the players reach number two, T. And uh, with Nate Doss taking the T box here, that is indicative that Avery must have been out of bounds mm -hmm. as Avery scored a four on the previous hole. Nate with his three. 389 feet, Terry. Basket slightly higher than the T. Nate with a good shot up the middle. All of these players have more than enough power to get there, so they are looking to get up within the 30-foot circle, so to speak, to capitalize on a deuce opportunity. We'll see what LaCastro can do. I'm, I'm expecting it to get up there within 30 feet on this. That's got the height. But out of bounds. Very close to that out of bounds line, Terry. Unfortunately, it looks like some of Nico's frustration may have carried over from the end of yesterday's round. Very fierce competitor, very tough on himself. And uh, we'll see if he can uh, get things going here today. Jenkins has to be crushed after that bogey. Felberg certainly want to stay out in front of that recovery stroke. And an impressive shot, 389 feet, ladies and gentlemen, just shy of 400 between player and the basket. That's an exceptional effort by Felberg. Jenkins, once again, needing to collect. Let's look for this one to go deep. going to start left, Terry. Oh, it looks like Not Avery happening. had something happen on the tee, whether it was a slip or a distraction, but something definitely got him off of the tee. You saw him immediately look down. Uh, it may have been a footwork problem or uh, traction or something. We're unsure. Uh, the, the tees are clear. There hasn't been any rain or anything, so I, I'm not sure, but he has thrown out of bounds. We'll see how that happens. <clears throat> Watch our group following our top men's group here at the Kansas City Wide Open. The very difficult number two, 389 feet. We saw Dave Felberg park it. That's 12 feet away. It's an exceptional example here of what you'll be seeing this afternoon as all part of our live broadcast. You're watching DiscGolfPlanet.tv. Our signal going around the world through the miracles of the interweb. It's a beautiful afternoon here in Kansas City with co-host Terry Miller, the disc golf guy of blogging fame. I'm Crazy John Brooks, the beat around old guy that can't play anymore. <laughs> but uh, we're happy to have you folks. Don't forget, you can become a member of discgolfplanet.tv. And uh, if you wouldn't mind uh, making the $25 membership fee, uh, show your generosity to become eligible for every prize giveaway on every broadcast in the future. We thank you for your support. We've got uh, pending conditions here. We've got uh, a few, few surprises probably in store for us this afternoon. Afternoon, uh, including Mother Nature's wares, might be showing uh, showing up later this afternoon. But nonetheless, we're prepared to bring you all the action live as we go back to number two. This is Jenkins putting for par after an out of bounds drive. Watching as Nate and the group are deciding exactly where who is out and uh, who's going to be throwing their next shot. 
Looks like Nate will take charge here. Again, Nate with more than enough power, unfortunately didn't have the lift that he needed in order to carry it to the basket. He will have a long putt attempt here for a birdie. We're only two holes in, too. It's very important to have your, have your vibe set in before too long to find a groove. Oh, oh. and a kidney stone to follow. Tough break for Doss. Uh, Nate's attempt from about 40 feet did not go in. That can be, you know, a, a, a funky breakfast. It could be, you know, something in your daily routine that didn't go right. He's just right on the edge. Now the Castro watching strokes fly out the window. This is for par. Oh, and all too similar to Nate's that went in over the top. Another. And just could not get all the way into the bottom of the basket. Feldberg is loving it. He's going to gain two here, one on the last hole. And just like that, we have seen Felberg go from being down five to only down two to one of our leaders at the time. So this is shaking up, assuming Felberg puts this in. This should be relatively routine from 10 feet. <laughs> and it is with no problems. And a birdie for Felberg pushes him way out in front of his original standings. Uh, Jenkins, very disappointing. Four. And Le Castro for four. And Doss for three. Watching our top men's group finish up on number two. They have quite a walk to number three T. We're going to take a short break, folks, from our live broadcast. We'll be back with you uh, live here from Swope Park. This is the 29th annual Kansas City Wide Open Disc Golf Championships. Brought to you live through the miracles of the interweb. And also our sponsors, the PDGA, Innova Champion Discs, and the Philadelphia Insurance Companies. I'm Crazy John Brooks, your host, joined by Terry Miller. We're going to be back with you very shortly after a few messages from our sponsors. We thank you for joining us live for coverage of the Kansas City Wide Open.